What do you remember about feeling from that time? Like I said, I, I, I came from Oklahoma and I was like um, in a type of family environment. Coming from the projects, I went to Oklahoma. For three years, it was more like family oriented and um, I got close with the white family I was living with. Mm -hmm. Then when I went to Detroit, um, Isaiah, <clears throat> Joe Dumont, and Chuck Daly was just embedded in, to me and said, you know what, this is about a family. We want to win. We got to stick together. We got to do this together. We got to do that. And I said a comment that the fact that we were so damn close, we should be having sex. <laughs> That's how close we were. <laughs> and thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I said it about that. I said it in a documentary, but it's like, okay, you know, you know what I mean, how close yes, we were. Yes, of course. I'm and, uh, <laughs> and it's like, when you heard that with Chuck Daly, that really hurt me a lot because he really actually was more like a father figure to me in the NBA. Well, this is what I was going to say. So we heard, saw earlier in the documentary, we talked about it uh, just a few minutes ago, you didn't, the first time you met your father was in the late 90s. Chuck yeah. Daly was a father right. figure to you. You went to Christmas at his house. A I lot. mean, that's, a lot. so it's funny, John Sally says there, oh, he didn't know it was a business. I always say this, it is a business, but it's also not a business, right? Yeah. Well. They ask you guys to spill blood for each other on that every court. Every night. Right? Well, so I didn't know about that. <laughs> when that stuff breaks up, it feels like you're getting abandoned kind of right. all over again. I can see how all of that happened. Right. And then you find out about going to Chicago. And I gotta play this clip also, <laughs> because this one talks about joining Scotty's Bulls and how that news was received inside of the Chicago locker room. Take a look. The Spurs today traded the controversial Rodman to the Chicago Bulls. To win a championship, you need pieces. And I was at peace they wanted. It was just a match made in heaven, right? Dennis Rodman got ready for Chicago's training camp by revealing yet another new look. Entering the 1995-96 season, the stakes were massively high for Dennis Rodman. Even after playing nine NBA seasons, he was nearly broke. Between taxes and living and an ex-wife and a daughter, he rented a nice house, but he had nothing saved up. And also, his reputation around the league had gotten to the point that he was radioactive. Dennis realized that in his own way, he had to straighten out and he had to play seriously or else his career was over. Phil, should you get into a situation where he starts rebelling, how will you deal with that? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I just love Phil from day one. I've always told Phil, I said, Phil, damn, you realize something? If we was living in the 70s together, we'd be in Woodstock just smoking it up. Bulls had this unique ability of leadership with Jordan and Pippen and Phil Jackson. Of all teams, we can probably absorb this lunatic more than anybody else. Dennis idolized Michael Jordan, almost like a fan. He wanted Michael's approval. <laughs> That's funny as hell. Well, I, people say that. I respected Michael so much what I did. That part Dennis is lying to you about. Dennis Rodman loves Michael Jordan's dirty ass drawers. <laughs> Scotty, when he did come, right, and you see a lot, even just in that one minute of, of film we saw, right, and about everything that preceded him, his reputation, he was social media before social media, all that stuff. How comfortable were you with Dennis as a, having Dennis as a teammate? Did it take you a little bit? It was a tough sale. Um, I definitely can say I wasn't overly excited to get him, mm -hmm. but it didn't take me long to say yes. <laughs> uh, I, I knew what Dennis brought to the table. Um, we just felt like that, and I personally felt like that Phil could handle any situation. Uh, Phil was always a father figure for his players, uh, helped guide him on and off the court, and I felt like he would be a great fit for Dennis. Uh, and it, it was a match made in, in heaven, uh, as Dennis stated. Um, we needed something that he could bring to the table, and he brought a lot more to the table than we bargained for. So it was a, it was a blessing in disguise for us. They put it with a lot, though. <laughs> it's a lot with, with the good, the bad, right? Right. The better for worse. Right. But, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was, was more there, like a, Was okay. there anything you put them through that you're like, I can't believe I did that? Well, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I know, but it's like, yes, they did, I did, so, but uh, it, it was funny, though, how winning and coming together as a team can solve a lot of things. 
But uh, we never really discussed, like, those three years we were together, mm -hmm. we never really discussed all the, what was going on outside of basketball. We never discussed on the court what's going on outside of basketball, about our daily lives. But once we got on the court, it was a whole different ball game. You never yeah. discussed what was going on in no. Las Vegas. Yes, no, 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 any of that. Okay, no, I'm yeah, just. So, <laughs> yeah, so it, I remember some of those stories where it was like you would tell us things and you're like, you can't print that, Rachel. And I'd be like, right. okay. Then right. I'd like write all the stuff in my little notebook and then be like, like that. <laughs> but. <laughs> but, but, it's, but it's funny though. Scott has never heard me say this, but I'm gonna say it to him while I'm on national TV around the world. Scotty Pippen is probably the innovator of the power point forward. I, I love Magic, I love Bird, I love Drexler, I love all these guys, but I want the world to know this guy right here, smooth. I mean, this guy, I mean, 6'9". Kevin Durant, kiss his ass. All the guys, all, all the guys that's 6'9", that's 6'10", six, six, all you guys need to come up with Scotty and please bow down to him. Because he revenue snatched that, that position in the NBA. I mean, you two might one on two, two on one, stuff like that. One two guy, Michael Hemis, Michael, the quickest guy, one two right here, ever. He's never heard me say this because I've seen a lot of videos of Scotty do. I mean, seriously, on the break, one two, boom. Mm -hmm. I mean, quick. Well, I will, on the break. I will tell you this getting to work with Scotty now that there are so many of today's NBA players who, when I say, oh, we're going to come do like a special show at training camp or we're going to do whatever, the first request is, can, can Scotty come? Can you bring Scotty? Can Scotty be there? Because right this is this is the guy that was up on their wall. Honestly, him and Tracy McGrady are the two players that we I hear the most. Either I emulated my game after Tracy, which is a different style, or I emulated my game after Scotty. And we have we have two different kinds of guys who say that, but that is the thing I hear the most. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.